Sandy Parker and welcome to Crafting for Almost Everyone. I decided I was going to do some swatches of my watercolors and I've got this big set of 36 and it comes with this nice plastic cover that, well, if I could dig it off, it it makes sure that your watercolors are nice and secure but it's perfect for swatching on. So what I'm going to do what I've already done actually is I punched a bunch of one and a half inch circles out with just a one and a half inch circle punch. Now you could cut squares, you could cut whatever you have, whatever size you want, you know, make it so it works for you. Then what I did is using my paper trimmer, I cut each one of the circles in half like that so that in the end I had two because what I'm going to do is I'm going to put them like this so that they don't cover up the whole color grid but you know exactly what you've got. So what I did then is I have this Xyron and I just put them in with the slit, the cut side down and you just pull them through. I'll put the last one in and you pull those all through. Now I have all of them, all 36 of them in a big row. See that? Then what you're going to do is we're just going to take each one off and I'm going to apply them to the plastic and then I'm just going to start coloring. So let me stick all of them down because now that they're run through the Xyron, they are a sticker. So I'm just going to attach them while the plastic is on here. I can show you that so that you know exactly what I mean. Alrighty, I'm getting the plastic out. This plastic wrap that's on top is very sticky. Get rid of it because it'll drive you nuts if you don't. So here's what my lo long line looks like. What you're going to do is you're going to take your first one, and I'm just going to do it in the middle so that you can see it really well. And I'm going to lay it over where it says number 50. I'm going to lay it right above the number 50. Um, I don't know if you can see that. Right there it says number 50. See that? It's very small. But, I, you know, in case... Later on, when I'm doing this, somebody says, what, what is that? I don't know. The, you know, the other symbols are all, I think these are Japanese made. So they're all Japanese, but the number is not. So since I can tell what the number is, I'll be able to say to you, well, that's, the, in this case, what I'm playing with right now, is number 57. So I'll be able to tell that. So that's what I'm going to be doing, and then I'll come back once I've got all of them laid down. Okay. So here's where I've already put all of my circles on, and so now they're ready to be colored. So what I'll do next is I'll take my plastic piece off, and I'm going to wet all of my colors down. Same problem I had before. Second verse, same as the first, can't get that out. Well, that's my next deal. I meant to tell you this next. Um, I don't like it when I can't pull things in and out. So I fix those kinds of problems. Here's what I do. You take washi tape, the kind that's real bendy, not the kind you buy from Dollar Tree. So what you're going to want to do is you're going to take a piece that is maybe three inches long, maybe three and a half. I'm going to cut the end so it's straight so it doesn't look real raggedy. You want to make sure that you're covering over the bottom and then you're going to try and do it as straight as possible because mine isn't straight, obviously not. Why would it be? And then you're going to lay that down on both pieces like that so that you end up with a little loop. You don't have to put it on the top and the bottom. You can only you can put it just on the bottom. Okay, so now every time I need to pull this out, I don't know if you can see this now, all I have to do is pick that up. It's there. It should stay secure for as long as I need it, but that's uh, an easy way for me to get things in and out. And I wanted to show you that because sometimes things like this can be the difference between having fun crafting and not for me. So that's, that's how I fix it. So I'm going to take it out. Oh, look how that came out so easy. How fabulous. 
And uh, again, I'm not going to wet this white or this pearl because I know that those are white and pearl. But I am going to take my spray bottle. I showed my new spray bottle in a video and uh, I only did it really quickly. But I bought this at the Dollar Tree and look at that great pump on it. The way it, you know, I love anything that's really ergonomically handy for me. So if I was you, I would go to the Dollar Tree and buy one of these because for a dollar it works for me and if it works for me it should work for just about anybody oh and in case you're wondering I don't know if you can see this I'm using uh, one hand and that is something else that people sometimes ask me is um, does it work if you only have use of one arm and in this case the answer is yes it does so I've wet everything and I'm done with my water now I'm ready to get started with my coloring. You're going to want to make sure that you color in the same exact order as these are set up. So what I mean by that is the very bottom row needs to be this gold one and then the next one is the bronze one beside it. And I have my water here to my left because I'm left handed you'll put yours to your right hopefully and I already have my brushes here so I'm gonna do hopefully yeah they're already wet enough I'm not gonna do a super amount of paint I just want to have enough paint on these so that the swatches end up being um, completely covered with pigment and because this is plastic, it doesn't matter. Oh, I, I did use watercolor paper in case you were wondering that. The paper I used is um, Fabriano 140 pound hot press and set pad. I've been using, I love it. It's, um, the, there isn't a lot of um, raised surface on it. So you can really, if, if you're stamping, you can really get a good stamped image on it. And uh, so that's why I like it so much. Alright, so our next section we're going to do is um, number 20, which is this one. It must be what they consider to be black or close to black. And I can always wi wipe off my plastic afterwards. If you can't see this, I'm going to move it over a little bit so you can. It's so hard, you know, when you're doing watercolors, it's really hard to tell the colors. And that's why I wanted to make sure I swatched these out. I meant to wipe this off with my cloth before I stuck it in my paint so I didn't have so much um, water on my brush. But I didn't. I didn't remember, as usual. I forgot. So this one is the first one that's actually not got so much water on it that it's going to run everywhere this process goes really quickly as you can tell it's just a matter of making sure that you get your colors lined up you know you don't you don't miss one as you go because that'll screw your whole thing up okay let me do the rest and I'll be back when I'm done so I turned it sideways now that everything has been painted and as they're drying I thought what I would do is clean up around them and what I'm doing is taking it just a wet paintbrush and I'm just going to go around the edges of them and just kind of make sure my paintbrush isn't super wet and then wipe it off on I have a cloth that I'm just wiping them on as I go this one's black so it's going to be the hardest one to clean never never fear I always pick the hardest one when I'm showing you something then we're going to go to the purple one same thing I have a lot of purple paint on the side that I need to wipe off. I want to get all that off if I can. And I don't need you don't need a soaking wet brush. You just need a damp brush because you're just trying to reactivate the paint enough to wipe it off. I'll go around my purple one. Again, just like the black, because it's such a dark purple, it's kind of hard to clean. And I'm doing this as quickly as possible, but you're going to take your time when you clean yours because you don't have a video going and people going, gee, Sandy, this takes forever to watch. That's, um, so that's how we're going to go from 
dirty to clean. We're just wiping each one as we go. And because we use that Xyron, they're staying, our pieces of paper are staying completely where we stuck them, which is great. No, no, uh, no worries about them moving, which is something you always have to think about when you're doing something like this. Is, is it going to move or is it going to stay in place? And so far, I haven't had any of them move, which is nice. So you got the idea of how you're going to clean them. You're just going to have a damp brush and kind of smear around the edges of it and then using your cloth you're just going to wipe off. So let me clean the rest of these off and I'll be back when they're clean. So this is what they look like now. They're completely swatched out and as you can tell all of them are really it's a lot easier to see the colors. You can tell you know at a glance what underneath the color is then you just take this off make sure if you're new to watercoloring that you let all these dry well before you put your plastic back on but that's what it looks like once it's completely done and swatched and i hope you enjoyed this please give it a thumbs up and subscribe and thanks so much for watching Bye bye